On today's show, Volkswagen's and Toyota's truck units form a partnership. Volvo Trucks introduces its first all-electric truck, and Continental develops a new system to prevent hydroplaning. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the automotive industry. Well, there's a lot of activity in the big truck market today. And first up, Volkswagen Truck and Bus and Toyota's truck unit Hino just formed a partnership to collaborate on logistics as well as to develop new technology and powertrains. The two companies say this will help slash development costs and help expand their global footprints. Next up, Volvo Trucks just introduced its first all-electric truck called the FL Electric. It is designed to transport cargo in urban areas, or it can be used as a garbage truck. It's powered by a 185-kilowatt electric motor and has between two and six lithium-ion batteries, depending on the setup, and that's going to provide a range of up to 300 kilometers, or about 186 miles. Sales of the FL Electric kick off in Europe next year. And lastly, big truck sales continue to soar in the U.S. Ward's Auto reports that medium and heavy-duty trucks were up 11% in March. All of that growth came from the big Class 8 trucks, which saw sales jump 26%. That compares to a slight 0.1% increase for Class 4 through 7. And through the first quarter, big truck sales are up nearly 20%. It's the same story in Canada, too. Sales of medium and heavy-duty trucks are up 26% in the first quarter. Still to come, despite production issues with the Model 3, Tesla moves forward with plans to build a new small crossover. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. And by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. Despite currently being in a production hell with the Model 3, Reuters reports that Tesla is pushing ahead with plans for its Model Y small crossover that's based on the Model 3. The automaker has began accepting bids for supplier contracts on the electric SUV and is aiming for production at its Fremont, California plant to start in November of 2019. It will also produce the Model Y in China, which is slated to start in 2021. Autonomous vehicles are going to need to be able to handle almost any condition nature can throw their way. And now the supplier Continental is focusing on hydroplaning. The condition causes a specific splash and spray pattern to come off the tires, which surround view cameras may be able to detect as hydroplaning and send a warning to the driver. Also, Continental's tire-mounted sensors produce a characteristic signal when excessive water builds up in front of the tire. But if the vehicle does start to hydroplane, Continental is looking at torque vectoring by individual wheel braking as a way to stabilize it. And if it's a connected vehicle, the system could be used to warn other drivers of the road conditions ahead. Is the auto industry too focused on the short term? We'll show you what one former executive says about that coming up next. Is corporate America too focused on the short term? That's what author and former president of JCI's North American Automotive Operations, Randy Soma, says. In the following clip from AutoLine this week, he discusses how the Detroit automakers were too focused on short-term goals while he was dealing with them at JCI. It was a reinforcement of the short-term versus the long-term. In the case of working with the automotive, GM Ford and Chrysler in particular, back in those days, is a lot of decisions were made three years in advance of the launch of a vehicle that were the center of gravity was get it cheap. You know, the cheap, the cheap, there wasn't a value proposition. Low bid, low bid, low bid. Sometimes I thought if we quoted zero, they'd give us the order. Uh, and, but what they didn't understand is the net net component of it, which the Japanese did understand Now, to do the net-net versus the net... What do you mean net-net? Net-net is, if I'm going to save money down here by by getting the cheaper component, 
I am going to spend that and then some three to five years from now on warranties, recalls, the reputation then your vehicle has in market, which means I need to discount it more and more and more. And so this is the decision here. The ripple effect is the net net. That was never taken into account. It was, it was here, this decision made here. So um, that's when, again, um, it, it, it became very clear to me that really all that mattered was here. And as, as I said before, when I would go to the supplier advisory council meetings at one of the three companies, I would go to the person that was uh, uh, at, the, at Chrysler, GM, or Ford, whose bonus, whose performance review was based on J.D. Power scores, consumer research reports, market share, and so on. And I would say to that person, you're in deep trouble because three years down the road here, the purchasing department's getting bonuses based on buying cheap parts. So they are, it was just this disconnect of short-term, long-term. You can watch that entire discussion right now on our website, autoline.tv, or you can find it on our YouTube channel. And don't forget to join us for AutoLine After Hours later this afternoon. Joining John and Gary is Rich Silbert, the Engineering Development Manager for the new Jeep Cherokee. If you have any questions, send them our way to viewer mail at autoline.tv. Then join us live at 3 p.m. Eastern Time at our website, autoline.tv, for some of the best insider discussions in the automotive industry. But that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Please join us again tomorrow.